All right, this is a brief uh, summary of how to graph radical equations. Okay, I'll probably make a couple videos on this because you know, there's a lot of information um, or different ways we can analyze these things. And the, the first thing we want to do, though, is we've got to be able to just graph the parent function for all of our radical equations. And I have that written here. This is the simplest radical function or radical equation. Remember, this could also be written f of x equals the square root of x. And when you're asked to do this, the first thing we have to recognize is that because it has a square root in it, uh, we aren't using imaginary numbers or graphing this on a real uh, coordinate axis. Uh, that means we can't take square roots of anything negative. So whatever x we plug in to this function, it's got to be bigger than zero. And we actually have to you generally write that equation down. You say x has got to be greater than or equal to zero. And that right there is what we call your domain because it tells you what x can be. Then what you want to do is just find uh, three good points to graph. Okay, so I put a 0 in for x and square root it and get 0. I put a 1 in for x and square root it and get 1. Plug a 4 in for x, square root it and get 2. Notice I picked uh, 4 here and not 3 because 4 is a perfect square, so much easier to square root than 3 is. So the next number I'd want to put in is probably a 9 if I want another point. And so here is the first point. 1, 1 is right there. 4, 2, and 9, 3. And I think this thing goes to 10, so 9, 3 would be right about there. And so this is my graph. Okay, And it should look very similar to a parabola because this is the inverse function of a parabola. In fact, were I to graph the inverse of the one I have in blue, it would look like this. And if you recall, uh, functions and their inverses are reflections about the line y equals x. So this is the line y equals x squared. Its inverse is this blue line, which is y equals the square root of x. Okay, so we don't have to draw that red line or this dotted line when we graph this thing. We just want to graph the exact function that we were given. I'm just using those to explain a little bit more. Um, the other thing we oftentimes answer is what the range is. To determine the range, we just have to figure out what y values are graphed. And you can see this thing starts when y is 0, and then it keeps going higher and higher and higher. And this graph goes all the way up forever. So our range, uh, we started at 0, and it goes to positive infinity. So this blue graph that I have drawn here, that's our parent function for all of these radical equations that we'll be graphing. So you want to keep that one in mind. Half of a parabola laying on its side. So let's uh, do another one of these things. Let's do y equals the square root of x plus 2 and outside the radical, we'll put minus 3. Okay. Again, we'll start by figuring out what our domain is. To figure out our domain, you take what's underneath the radical, and you say, hey, you've got to be either 0 or bigger than 0, positive. So this tells us x has got to be greater than negative 2, and that's our domain. Uh, we'd write this in interval notation as starting at negative 2 and going to positive infinity. Okay, that's all the numbers bigger than negative 2. Next, uh, we'll make an xy table. Now, i got to choose very carefully here. Uh, I don't want to plug a 0 in there, because then I have to take the square root of 2. Okay? In fact, a good spot to always start is whatever the beginning of your domain is, in this case, negative 2. I plug negative 2 in, I add 2 to it and get 0. Square root of 0 is 0, but then i got to subtract 3. I could plug in a negative 1. If I plug in negative 1, I get negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. The square root of 1 is 1 minus 3, negative 2. I don't want to plug in the 0 because that gives me the square root of 2. I don't want to plug in 1. That gives me the square root of 3. I'll plug in a 2 next, which is the square root of 4 then, 2 plus 2. It gives me a 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. So let's graph this thing. My first point that I could plug in, the smallest x was negative 2. And at negative 2, it's at negative 3 right down here. 
at negative 1, it's at negative 2, right there. And at 2, it's at negative 1, right there. And so there is my graph. Again, going to the right and going upward uh, forever. So my range for this one, its lowest point is right down here at negative 3, and then it goes up forever. Okay, now if we compare this to the previous graph, notice this previous graph started at 0, 0. This graph was shifted from 0, 0. I'm going to draw the first graph we did right on here. First graph looked like that. Notice this started at 0, 0. This new graph is shifted to the left right here by 2, and it shifted down by 3. And notice we see a 2 and a 3 in our equation. Okay, The equations, if you get good at them, you can actually tell where it's going to shift to uh, before you even graph it. Okay, In general, what you want to do is, if you uh, have a number that's added or subtracted on the outside, that's going to do a vertical shift. So in this case, it said shift it down by 3, which we can see it is. And under the radical, you just have to figure out what x value makes it 0. And in this case, negative 2 makes it 0. So it shifted left by negative 2 units. Okay, Let's look at uh, one more of these things. So again, let me just erase some of this other work so you can see what our final graph looks like again. Just like that. And let's look at one more. We'll look at this guy right here. y equals negative of x plus 2. Again, we're going to start by setting the stuff underneath the radical to be bigger than or equal to 0. It gives me x is greater than or equal to negative 2. That's my domain. In fact, this thing right now, I'd say it's going to start to the left by negative 2 right there. Now, we haven't seen one with a negative sign in front of it before, so let's see what that does to our values. I'm going to start with negative 2, my zeroing value and I get 0, and then the opposite of 0 is still 0. Then I'll plug in, ooh, let's plug in negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. The square root's 1, but then I want the opposite, negative 1. Now let's plug in uh, oh, 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, the opposite of, and then I got square root that, that's 2, and then the opposite, negative 2. And so this one starts at negative 2, 0, where I've already drawn my first point. Negative 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. And it curves this way. And this is, in general, what this negative sign in front of your uh, square root function will always do. Normally, if without that negative square root function, it would look like this blue line I've drawn. But because of that negative in front, it flips it over the x-axis. So we have x-axis symmetry, basically. Um, I guess I shouldn't call it symmetry, but uh, an x-axis reflection, because that part doesn't really exist, but it is a reflection of that part. Okay, So that's another useful uh, tidbit to know. A negative on the outside can cause a graph to flip over the x-axis. And finally, we'll do a simple one here. Let me put a new graph on our paper. There we go. This time, instead of putting the negative on the outside, let's put the negative on the inside. Put negative x plus 3. Again, we'll start the same way. We'll ask, what makes the stuff inside greater than or equal to 0. Be a little bit careful here. I have to divide by a negative 1 to get x alone, and that flips my inequality. So my domain this time, the x's are less than 3, so it looks like this in interval notation goes to negative infinity and starts at 3. Uh, positive 3 makes this under the radical 0, so Positive 3 is where this thing is going to be shifted to the right, right where I've drawn that purple dot by 3 units. Let's go ahead and graph a few points. Now this time I want to choose x values that are less than 3. I'll start with 3 again, which gives me 0. 
then I'll plug in a 2, because that's negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. Uh, I could try a 1, but that gives me negative or gives me a 2 underneath the radical. Uh, I could try a 0, that gives me 3. I could try a negative 1, which gives me negative negative 1, or 1 plus 3, 4, square root is 2. So let's look at what that negative on the inside did to um, our graph. There's 3, 0, here's 2, 1, and finally negative 1, 2. So this one curves this way. This one reflected it horizontally. In fact, uh, it would be a reflection about this line, x equals 3 from the normal graph. Okay, so in this case, it points to the left. Again, that's because of that negative sign inside, or, yeah, inside the radical. So let's find one really big equation and look at the whole thing. Let's do uh, h of x, or f of x, equals the square root of negative 2x minus 4, and then minus 3 on the outside. We'll start it the same way. I'll ask what does x have to be, so the stuff under the radical is positive or 0. Ambient x is less than or equal to negative 2. Okay. Uh, what this means, let's put some graph paper on here. I can tell a whole bunch about it already. I can tell that negative 2 will make underneath the radical equal 0. Negative 2 gives me 4 minus 4 is 0. So this graph is going to be shifted left by 2. The 3 on the outside says it'll be shifted down by 3, so negative 2, negative 3 is right there. The negative in front of the x tells me that's going to be flipped, pointing to the left-hand side. Remember on this previous one, it made it point left when there was a negative under the radical. So there's a negative in front of the x under the radical. This one's going to point left. I'm going to pick a few x, y values now. Uh, I have to be less than negative 2, so I might try negative 3. That gives me 6 minus 4. So negative 3 isn't a very good choice. I'll try negative 4, which gives me 8 minus 4, uh, which is 4. Square root is 2, and 2 minus 3 gives me negative 1. So negative 4, negative 1 is right there. Negative 5 gives me 10 minus 4 under the radical. That's a 6. That doesn't help. Negative 6 gives me 12 minus 4, which is 8. Can't square root that very easily. Negative 7 gives me 14 minus 4. Uh, negative 8 gives me 16 minus 4. Negative 9 gives me 18 minus 4. Negative 10 is a good number. Negative 10 gives me 20 minus 4, which is 16. Square root of 16 is 4, and 4 minus 3 is 1. So at negative 10, way over here, it's up here at 1. And there is my graph. Again, it pointed left because of that negative sign, just like I thought. And it shifted uh, left 2 and down 3. If I was going to list domain and range for this, I'd say my domain, everything less than negative 2. So D will be everything from negative infinity all the way up to negative 2. And my range, I look at my graph and say, what's the lowest you go to? The lowest it goes to is negative 3, and then it goes to infinity. So I'm going to put my negative 3 in a bracket, and then upward to positive infinity. And that is graphing these in a nutshell. Hope this helps. Make sure you do your homework and ask questions in class.